I just want to rewind a little bit and give you a little bit of background on why it's a million little things as opposed to an epiphany. One thing is that we're very resistant to change. And I think the greatest example here was The Biggest Loser. To, to those of you who didn't bother watching it, and I did bother watching it, my wife watched a little bit of it. She gets sucked into a little bit of this rea reality TV every now and then, although she'll tell you that it's 90 Day Fiance and nothing else. But uh, I, I catch her every now and then. <laughs> I guess it's the worst thing she could do. But anyway, the, the game show, so to speak, a reality show, however you want to look at it, was uh, you go in as a big fat bastard and they do horrible things to you. They make you jog, and you know you shouldn't be jogging if you're a biscuit shy of 300 or 400 or 500, or whatever they were. And uh, I mean, I'm a big dude. I I know I shouldn't be jogging. I don't jog because of that. But anyway, they do all these horrible things to them, and they starve them, and they go through these drastic, you know, all these drastic, harsh changes. And guess what happens? They become skinny. Well, guess what happens when they're no longer on the game show? they become fat again. And a lot of cases, some people end up fatter than when they started. And there's been a few articles out there called the biggest gainers, the biggest whatever, uh, based on, on this. But the, the bottom line is your body resists drastic change. And that's why all these little tweaks are what's going to make you successful as a trader, as opposed to some big old slap in the head or whatever which you might need. Anyway, uh, the other example I'll talk about, we have, we have some friends that they go on their triannual diets every year. And it's like when they're on their diets, it's like what, you know, we, we now learn to call it when they when we invite them over for dinner or whatever. Are you guys dieting? <laughs> because if they're dieting, they're not a lot of fun. And it's like, they'll go on these diets for three or four weeks or however long. And we kind of avoid them a little bit during that period. You know, we'll, we'll get the We'll have them come over and they'll be peckish and hungry and crotchety. And it's like, oh, great. You know, they're not a lot of whole, whole lot of fun to be around. And then a few weeks later, as I wrote one of the articles on the website, they'll be partying like rock stars. We'll see them on Facebook with some of their long lost friends. And we're like, well, you know, how come we didn't get the benefit of, of your, of that, you know? But anyway, and more often than not, they end up worse than before. She's now on Zimpic, and I don't really think she needs to be on, on Zimpic. And you go, younger guys might laugh at me, but as you get older, what you consider overweight is uh, kind of kind of goes up uh, significantly. But uh, she looks absolutely fine, and she does not need to be on Zimpic. But anyway, long story endless there. The bottom line is your resistance to change. And, and the weight loss, it just makes for such a great example. And Dr... Robert Mara wrote a book called The Kaizen Way. Read it. He also wrote Mastering Fear, which was also pretty good too. But the uh, the Kaizen Way was a really good book, and it talks about change and all. And I saw him speak at a conference that I was also speaking at. He was the the psychologist that that spoke. And uh, one thing that it, that he talked about was there was this, and this might I think this is in the book too. But he had a, a person that came to him that had tried everything in the world to lose weight. And he found out that she liked to watch TV. So he said, well, let's do this. Every commercial, I want you to stand up. That's all I want you to do is stand up during the commercials and sit back down when the commercial is over with. And she did that. And then she started marching during the commercials. And then she started standing up and marching the whole time she watched TV or whatever the case may be. Next thing you know, she's running and then she ended up running marathons. And obviously she lost all the weight and, and she was able to keep it off too. And she just made these little bitty changes. And that's kind of the secret to life is a bunch of little trade changes and get in the routine or something. Like I rarely miss a workout now and the old me would always put it off and always have an excuse or whatever, but I just kind of make it, I made it such a habit just every day. I just do it. And initially what got me into that habit was I had two friends that I worked out with and they would give you a hard time, <laughs> you know, if you, if you cut a workout, you know, and, and obviously work excuses aside, they, they give you, you know, guys are, guys are harsh on, on each other. You know, women are like, I wish you just treat me like one of the guys like, no, no, you don't, Danny. Anyway, recapping last week, you want to document your trading. That's number 349, 595, number 692,000. 301, document your life, and that's through the morning pages, and that's going to change your life, by the way. Go and watch last week's presentation. And we kind of did a gentle introduction, talked a lot about documentation, and number 302,874, 
was in general, don't buy a market below the 30 EMA. And it's interesting, it's it, that simple little rule, and, and, and I notice someone got themselves into a little bit of trouble and last week, and had they not bought a market that was clearly way below the 30, they wouldn't have got themselves in trouble. I'm not saying it's gonna keep you out of all trouble, but it's gonna keep you out of a lot of trouble. Number 590,088, set limit orders when necessary. Now, sometimes, as I've talked about before, you, you don't always want that limit order in place, never to enter a trade unless you're doing an option or something like that where you want to be in, but you don't want to overpay. But as far as initial profit target, sometimes you might want to put a limit order in if something is, is has gotten there pa- fairly quickly. Let's say you get in the stock on Monday and on like Wednesday, it's almost there. Just put that limit order in just in case it spikes up to, to go ahead and, and pay you. In other cases, you might want to use a little discretion and squeeze out a a little more profits on an initial profit target. But sometimes you want want to put in that hard limit order just so you can get paid on a spike. And then number 561,047 is use a small amount of discretion when necessary. In other words, don't split hair. So getting back to the SDM trade, my initial profit target was 415 and it was rallying up kind of nicely and then it kind of stalled out a little bit. So I put in a hard limit order, uh, actually place the order. When I say a hard order, I mean to actually place the order at 415. Now, it was having a really hard time getting to 415. So I went ahead and I left the limit order on. And while it was on, just a quick little trick here. I don't know how it works with other brokerages, but if you do a cancel and replace, you can, that order is still working until you actually hit send on the new order. So every now and then I'll have that up and I'll leave it up and I'll just wait to see if I get paid on that limit order. And if it goes for a little while and it starts backing off a little bit, I'll just go ahead and say, you know what? I'm not gonna split hairs. I'll go ahead and pull the trigger. So in this particular case, this limit order for 1500, I made the change and I just change it to at the market and hit enter. And I got out slightly lower, 414 and a half. All right, number 590,088, announce your orders. Now this is, this one sounds a little quirky, but just bear with me for a second here. Let me go back to my CTA days. So back in the day when I first started trading commodities, there weren't these online brokers. They they, they came on shortly thereafter. That's showing how old, how old I am. But you had a voice broker and there was actually a beauty to having a voice broker. I remember one time I called in and I loosened the stop instead of tighten it. And the lady who took my order actually said, you know, you're loosening this stop instead of tightening tightening it, which is a mortal sin. So just having that person out there was like, you know what? I am doing something I should be doing. But anyway, you read the order to them with intent. It's like, I'd like to buy, that's buy, it's purchase. 10 contracts, that's one zero of November Thanksgiving crude at the market. And November Thanksgiving, so they know that, okay, so when's Thanksgiving? It's in November. So make sure they got the right month down. One time I said October Halloween crude, and they laughed at me. I guess nobody says Halloween for October. But anyway, so the reason I'm saying this is you'd be surprised how many times you fat feed an order. And, and, and you know, it's a million little things. And, and case in point, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to admit something here to you. I I lost money today in LabD, okay? And if you plot LabD, you're going to be like, mm, you know, a, a monkey could could have made money in that, right? Well, the reason was I thought I was selling something else and I ended up selling LabD. Had I followed my own little rule here and announced that, hey, I'm selling this LabD, well, hang on, Dave, wait a minute. Are you in the right stock even or ETF? As silly as this sounds, especially if you're by yourself, announce your order out loud. And, and the thing that's kind of strange here, and, and, and this is a million little things, and, and I can't emphasize how important this is, these brokerages all the time change things. And sometimes it's under the guise of paternalism. It's like, are you sure you want to do this? And it's like, yeah, and I'm used to click it three times for you. Sure, 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 sure. Like on a, a browser-based broker. There's been times where they put like an extra thing in there, you know? warning me that Beto or whatever is a cryptocurrency and like I'll see it something like Beto take off 
But I'm like, okay, let me just let me just pick up some of that. And I watch my screens. I'm like, whoa, I'm making a lot of money on that. Let me go see how that's doing. And then it'll be sitting there just blinking, waiting for me to click one more little thing that had to be clicked. I, I was so used to clicking, you know, click, 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 and I'm in. Now I have to check off another stupid little box. So announcing your orders out loud makes a lot of sense. And it's such a little bitty thing you can do. And today was modestly profitable for me on the on the intraday stuff, but it would have been much, much, much better had I not fat fingered and lost on lab D. That would have been my biggest win of the day.